great. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Today we've got a special guest from Solara, and that's Leon Vandenberg, the co-founder and CTO. How are you going, Leon? Good, thanks a lot, Alex, and hello to Nugget News. Yeah, all the followers out there are pretty familiar with um, renewable energy space and how it's a you know a great way to implement those blockchain solutions. So a bit of background, how did you get into the crypto space in general and what's the project aiming to achieve? Yeah, the, the my background in crypto has been quite quite long. I uh, first learned about elliptic curve crypto um, in my undergraduate in, in Canada. So uh, I went to University of Waterloo where... Uh, um, they kind of perfected this and patented, you know, what was elliptic curve that went into BlackBerry and RIM, RIM sort of uh, phone, um, pages and phones. So um, I was all part of the, the initial kind of um, Bitcoin at, at 12 bucks and I did mining. And, uh, you know, don't store your, uh, your Bitcoins at Gox. And uh, <laughs> if you're mining in a hotel room, you know, uh, try not to sell your Bitcoins because they were very expensive sort of a little asset I sold to, to pay for my hotel bill. <laughs> so there's uh, important lessons. Yeah. Um, we did and tried uh, containerized mining back in 2014 out of a factory in Shenzhen. We uh, were doing ASICs and uh, uh, the ASICs we picked couldn't really scale when the hash rate went up and the difficulty went times five. Um, we basically, the whole project was a throwaway. And uh, I, I always thought, how can I use Bitcoin and blockchain math, um, but use it in a renewable energy way. So how can you create the math of Bitcoin and the consensus type of fabric uh, off of renewables? And this is where I've, I've always had this itch in the back of my head. How can you do this? And uh, this is what Solera and the prior company called Rights Fusion was all about. Rights Fusion was the R&D company, and now Solera is the brand and the white paper and the, and the website. Yeah, beautiful. And how does the um, the eSIMs and the um, sensor tech, how does that all fit into it as well? Yeah. So the um, the eSIMs are really the cheapest way to provide a cryptographic uh, signature um, in a trusted, let's call it um, secure enclave, a, a container of um, their little Java cards. In fact, these eSIMs. So these little trust machines, you know, what, what can you do with them? Uh, at a prior startup called Fuso, um, we did uh, overlay SIMs. Overlay SIMs are a kind of hardware hack on, a, on an existing SIM card. And the whole industry kind of shifted to eSIMs. And during this whole shift, we, we said, okay, we better pick an IoT thing. Um, this whole eSIM play in the mobile industry is going to take a while to gestate. And there's still there's a whole bunch of things that are uh, problematic with it in the uh, carrier industry, not, not so much IoT. But um, the, uh, the whole thing that we're using the eSIMs for is to provide that little digital signature, that elliptic curve. We're putting in the, the curve primitives in the SIM. And so that SIM can fit on top. Of, it's a soldered little chip inside the actual um, um, sensor itself. And that provides a little digital signature of the, of the data packet that comes off the sensor. So we provide little heartbeats of, of math coming off the panel. So, yeah, as I said at the start, we've seen a lot of projects, and I know you guys have even talked to, um, you know, Electrify Asia, everyone's pretty aware of PowerLedger. So what is that sort of unique um, solution and real-world problem that you're solving that's different or complementary to some of these other projects? We think we're primarily complementary, but we're, we're a different kind of stance in the marketplace. We, um, we're a type of innovation that happens behind the smart meter, and... Uh, we put little uh, sensors as a distributed root of trust on top of the solar panels. And those little um, uh, solar panels each create their own little mathematical footprint. And besides the electrons coming off the panel, um, we provide little heartbeats every panel. So if you can imagine every panel making a little EKG, a little heartbeat, we provide a little cryptographic stamp on top of each heartbeat. And that stamp is linked to its prior stamp, linked to its prior stamp. And this provides a little mathematical truth machines, you know, what came off each panel. And the Bitcoin math is kind of perfect. Um, blockchain math, you know, it's just an extension of that Bitcoin thinking. And we provide this capability um, to accumulate these little sensors, um, these little um, sensors itself. This is a little MSP430. It's a little Texas instrument chip, uh, the little wireless chip on top. Yeah. So these little sensors work behind the meter 
and we aggregate these. So on a, on a prosumer sort of home installation, maybe 20, 25 panels, we'd accumulate all of those little heartbeats and we, we have a little edge node that accumulates all that math. We keep the, all of that data and the full data set, that interval data, that's high resolution data, we keep that all local and we provide a little tangle or a stamp into a public blockchain using a fork of Ethereum called the Energy Web Foundation. So we made a framework of a, of a local blockchain that works fast enough. We call it proof of fusion. We're, we're proving the heartbeat of energy came off the solar panel, proof of the fusion energy. And those little witness proofs go into a, a public blockchain and it's sort of timestamp. And that's really what we're offering. That's fascinating. So once you have all this um, data, what what does that mean for everyone all the way down to that individual retail investor to a huge solar farm? What can they start, um, start to sort of tinker with and what's the benefits from all of this? Yeah. So we, we think we really help to solve about four market problems. We, we still have challenges with energy fraud. So we, we're providing this provenance, this, this proof of, of green energy. And that those provenances also um, uh, are created uh, behind the meter where we have this absolute kind of fidelity this forensic grade linked of data um, and this behind the meter sort of systems a lot of these systems have losses that are unaccounted for all that the retailer sees of what you see on your bill is just something that that you've exported you don't necessarily see all of the um, the detail what's happening in your microgrid and we provide that fidelity as well the the other side of it is the the data quality um, there is um, maybe some interval data that's missing and we provide that uh, capability. The real thing that we really do is we tokenize the asset, this kind of cryptographic proof. When the panel's installed, we provide a, a type of proof of installation. So the panel, once it's commissioned, that's the seed event for that generation sort of production tail of data. And this ultimately can be um, fractionally owned and legally perfected. So when we, we're doing this, we create an architecture for funding projects in a new way. We're using tokenization and energy security and providing the legal provenance and, and actual legal perfection. The property right is actually imbued into the actual token itself. And this is a real uh, problem that only blockchains can solve. Um, we think that we're using uh, the blockchain feature set pretty uniquely and we're really offering a compelling reason to invest um, both uh, retail money and wholesale money into this sort of uh, asset class. So what we're trying to do is to make the whole thing work, this whole Solera platform work for community energy projects and then bigger solar farms to begin with. Later on, as we get down the learning curve and the experience curve, we'll have good pricing models for the prosumer and Joe six pack with a solar panel on a, on his uh, roof, and that that's really where we're we're entering the market first with community energy projects. Awesome. So you've spoken about that public versus private chain and the token a little bit. So um, I was going to dive into the token a little bit more in terms of sure all the benefits you just mentioned then on the platform and how hard was that to um, you know these days with the lawyers and all that sort of stuff about what's a utility token versus what's the security and what the, were the things to make it a big mm. focus that someone is investing in the platform itself and then I guess that the success is dependent on how widely used the um, platform itself is in the next few years. Yeah, I think we've overachieved and overspent on our legal bill. Um, we looked at this first when PowerLedger, uh, before PowerLedger got their uh, token sale up. Um, we, we wanted to provide a utility service, so we wanted to make sure that the SOL token, SOL token, when you buy it, it really turns on this infrastructure. So it's an infrastructure access and enablement token. It creates an ecosystem play that um, is quite unique. So um, when you assemble solar panels and you make a project, you really transfer your ownership into a type of asset class that is yield bearing. And accordingly, if, uh, if you have a, a yield bearing asset in different jurisdictions, then that becomes a, potentially a security token. So we, we did not want to do a raising where we're saying, here's, an, here's a token that creates a yield. We're saying, here's a token that enables infrastructure. And so we went 
to the boundary line of becoming a security token, we took one step back. And so in our economy, we have we have two tokens, a SOL token uh, called a SOL token, and then you vend that SOL token and redeem it into a project token when you want to be involved with projects. Thank and you. so we'll, we'll, we'll create that sort of definition between the utility of our market, of our infrastructure and then the actual security benefits of, of playing in a marketplace. And, and so that, that's really our, our point of difference. Yeah, cool. Now, you guys are raising um, the traditional way as well as obviously the, the new decentralized way. What's that been like yeah. um, in terms of business awareness? You know, we're not at mass adoption yet. Not People aren't familiar with crypto and blockchain the world over. But what's it been like um, in terms of, you know, 12 months ago or two years ago for you sort of t explaining blockchain technology to people? What's the vibe you're getting now? Yeah, I guess I, I still have to do, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain 101 um, and then 201 and say, okay, here's the resources. Go read this book or listen to this this podcast. Certainly the service that you provide is a great sort of utility to rent people in. Um, I, I've done everything from, um, you know, the shake and bake of the technology stack to um, to lawyers, to uh, technologists and, and patent attorneys. So <laughs> it, it's it's it's. Quite, you've got to be quite good at decoupling people's understanding to the level of, okay, where, where's, where's their point of view and context? Yeah. Some want to do a deep dive into all the token economics and you can say, well, step back, Here, here's how far we go. After that, it's actually, a you know, the white paper is a thought treatment. We don't have all the answers yet into how it's all going to um, pan out in the ecosystem because we actually have to build the infrastructure. We have to get to scale before we're going to have this whole uh, ecosystem uh, firing and being a total closed loop. Yeah, and we're comfortable with that. And uh, a lot of people saying, "Well, how can you build something and not know where you're going?" Well, we're actually creating crypto proofs right on the solar panel. These are little um, necessary ingredients, the the primitive, you know, crypto um, proofs that are required for any input into any blockchain. So we're quite confident to say. We're making infrastructure that anyone could use in any range of blockchains. Before we dive into some more things just about Solara, just quickly, where do you see the, the, the space as a whole? I mean, when Bitcoin goes down 70% mm. and all these projects go down 90%, would that be frustrating for you or it might happen again in the future? Are we just so early on or where do you see everything fitting together? Look, we're, we're still very, very early. We, you know, we we've had Bitcoin go up to twenty one k or more, and you know, I was there, and we had people sell out at twelve hundred. So, uh, uh, it's we're still so early. You know, this is um, uh, we we have a long term lens on this. This is blockchains aren't ready for prime time yet. Um, people still have custodial problems with their keys, yeah. and we're building necessary infrastructure. Um, Engineers build infrastructure, so then the stuff on top can be built and delivered to consumers. Yeah. So this is a, a necessary infrastructure build. Solera is an infrastructure play. Um, it's a horizontal marketplace. And then we'll have applications on top of that. Yeah. So we're quite confident that we need a long-term lens. We need people with deeper pockets and a more strategic focus involved with the team, involved with our finance, and ultimately there'll be a marketplace to some people that want to find an exit um, on a token sale, but other people that say, okay, solar panels live for 20 years, maybe 30 years. So how is this whole marketplace going to evolve as um, solar gets more adopted in the industry and we, we get the uh, price of storage dropping significantly as well? So what's going to be the market dynamics and how can this infrastructure ecosystem be beneficial to all of the stakeholders? How can it work for Joe Consumer, how can it work for wholesalers? How can it work for ultimately um, different communities? So we think that our infrastructure has necessary ingredients for a whole range of marketplaces. One for settling the electrons and the other one's just for providing a data marketplace, a, a marketplace for data. And that's very important. Yeah, no, great answer. And it's probably that segue into that next question I had about once we've got this infrastructure, you know, we hear these buzzwords big data, you know, internet of things. What else is possible with the applications that can be built on top of the tech and where would you love to see this going in the future? Yeah, well, look, the um, the electrons are partially some of the most boring things to, to deal with this. We have 
to settle the electrons locally once they're uh, exported out of the inverter or past the boundary meter. We never see them again. You know, phys physics takes over. Um, but this whole, <laughs> the whole um, solar analytics and, and data marketplace is something that will have a very long tail of utility. And ultimately, as solar gets more uh, pervasive in, in, in storage as well, we have to have real hard forecastability. The how um, forecast, well, how hard is your forecast to just be able to dispatch electrons a week from now from a solar farm or three weeks from now? You're going to enter into futures contracts. You want to know how firm is that contract? So in 21 days from now, can I dispatch a megawatt of energy for an hour or four hours? Um, and then you want those forecastability to be really hard and, and know how definite they are. Is it a 95% confidence interval or is it 60%? You know, how, and then you, if it's a rubbery forecast, you know, your pricing model goes uh, kind of out the door. Mm. So this is called, uh, what, what the industry term is, we want firm spread. We want to be able to determine the hard forecastability of this. And we really need a long tail of data and a long experience curve to make that happen. So, you know, the first week of installing our sensors is not going to give us much data, not much utility. We'll need a whole year um, of data, all the seasonal changes, and then be able to see, okay, what's happening this year? How is that happening? So um, if we're going to build a data set, we'll have machine learning. And then eventually as the data gets more, more useful and more uh, models get more refined and uh, recurse, then we'll be able to say, oh, this is a set and forget type of uh, mechanism for um, uh, Joe Consumer who wants to always buy energy when it's green and he wants to sell energy but have enough in reserve for when the kids come home. Yeah. So the, those sorts of things require um, a real long uh, uh, tail of data for us to be very confident about it. It's a very exciting time to be alive and I look forward to you know everything that's going to be happening around us in the future, but we're in the privileged position of hoping to understanding what's happening behind all these little gadgets and meters and whatever yeah. as well which is just awesome so um any final thoughts you guys are australian based and international presences as well and where can people go to find out more yeah look we're we're owned by a hong kong company and um offshore we've got investors uh in caymans as well um we came to australia with this asset class because um the the price opportunity was there you know, you're paying 40 cents a kilowatt hour for for corporate access to retail retail energy when we can make it for, you know, five or 15 cents, depending on the scale. Um, we we're active globally um, with our with our token sale. It's at Solera, S-O-L-A-R-A dot I-O. And uh, I'm on Twitter um, at Leon underscore Vandenberg. Uh, and um, I'd love to be involved and uh, follow up with your with your uh, community. No worries. So I'll put the links to that below, guys, in the description. And thanks so much for joining us today, Leon. I'm sure we'll talk again in the future. Fantastic. Thank you, Al. Cheers, guys.